All right, today we're gonna to be talking about the, uh, the end of the war, the back half of it, uh, winning the revolution, winning of independence. This right here, this picture here, this is George Washington, this is Cornwallis, and uh, this is the surrender at, at uh, Yorktown. Let's see Yorktown back here. Don't worry about that. Some of the stuff we're gonna go over. All right, uh, campaign of 1777. The British, they were holding New York. That's up here, New York. Uh, their aid was delayed until summer. That is, the British, uh, they couldn't get any additional troops, couldn't get any supplies, anything like that over the winter. And the French, they hadn't yet openly joined the war yet. Uh, they were still waiting on the Americans to win some kind of dec decisive battle. Uh, but until then, they were sending aid in secret. British tried to move on Philadelphia. It's up here in Pennsylvania. Um, and Washington attempted to stop them at Brandywine. Brandywine's one of the bigger, uh, bigger battles uh, if you study the Revolutionary War, but we're not talking about battles. So moving on. Valley Forge. Valley Forge kind of plays into the myth, uh, meaning the uh, great origin of uh, how we began. Big storytelling of how we began is, is what myth means. Uh, Valley Forge plays into that. George Washington, he had to winter his troops and um, it was a very bad winter. About 2000 people died due to starvation. They just didn't have enough supplies to go around, which is pretty amazing because people don't usually die. I mean, they, they should have, I would have went home before I, I died of starvation. Uh, they had really ragged uniforms. Supplies were smuggled in from Philadelphia. This is a really interesting story, Abigail Adams, um, John Adams' wife, she uh, rallied the people, uh, made fundraisers and everything, and went to Washington and uh, told Washington that uh, they had raised some $300,000, which was huge, and asked Washington what, what, he, what they should do with it, what the women in Philadelphia should do with it, and he told them, hey, we need uniforms. So because they didn't have any manufacturing, uh, all the women, they started spinning cloth, you know, like uh, Sleeping Beauty with, with the uh, spinning wheel. They started spinning cloth uh, to make them uniforms. Friedrich von Steuben, um, he came down and he helped uh, Washington retrain the troops. He's, he's the one that really made a, uh, a, an actual army, a professional army out of this Continental Army. He taught him how to drill, he taught him how to fight. He did that over the winter there at Valley Forge. 1778, after the winter, um, the French, they see that the Americans are still in it, so they enter the war. What they did was they used their Navy. They didn't send a whole lot of troops, but they did use their Navy, blockade British ports, threaten the supply lines, that kind of thing. British ended up uh, retreating out of Philadelphia, and during that time, Washington, he's hitting, as they're retreating, Washington's hitting their backside. So he strikes their rear guard. That whole battle ends in a stalemate, but it does end up with the British taking off from Philadelphia. Spain and Holland, they declare a war on England, but they're fighting for their own interests. They're not actually siding with the colonists that are trying to break away. They're not siding with the Americans. They're just in it for their own interest. Because of this, British, they're fo focused, uh, they're forced to focus on their own other, their other interests within the West Indies, as well as to some extent the East Indies over in uh, India as well, but mostly in the Caribbean. They have to get a lot of sugar plantations down there. They had to fight in order to keep uh, those trade routes open. Um, during this time, because the British were all held up with Holland and Spain, uh, Washington was able to handle his sort of Indian problem, which was the tribes um, the Iroquois tribes that had sided with the British. And in fact, uh, even still today, even though the Confederation is kind of gone, the, the Mohawk tribe, they still uh, declare uh, uh, they are allies with uh, England, even today. British, they did succeed in the South. Not much is talked about the battles that are fought in the South, but the British mostly because the British succeeded there. They attacked through Florida. Uh, Florida at the time, 
the the British had gotten um, from France, from Spain, Florida as a colony. Um, but the British were able to attack through there. The defenses, they were right up due to the autumn storms. Remember, if you recall, uh, in the fall in Florida, in the south, get a lot of hurricanes. Uh, so they had to hurry up and uh, create defensives due to those hurricanes. Uh, Britain, it controlled the coast, uh, up and down the side of the west coast. And then you have this guy, Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, right? If you watch that movie, The Patriot with Mel Gibson, it's very, very extremely loosely based on this guy. Uh, some of the setting in The Patriot is, is based on things that actually happened, but most of the movie is not historically accurate at all. Um, unlike, I would say, Hamilton, which is fairly well historically accurate, uh, set to song. Um, the colonial lost at Camden, and the entire South ended up being in British hands. It's you know, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, all of, all of those, or Florida, not Alabama yet, but all of those Southern colonies uh, ended up in British hands. Nader, Nader means low point. It's on a curve, the nadir is the lowest point in that curve. Continental currency had depreciated. The issue is Continental Congress uh, or, or the colonies had printed so much money that it wasn't worth anything. It was barely worth the paper that it was printed on. In 1780, they had a winter worse than Valley Forge. Um, it was colder, it was longer, uh, more people deserted. The states weren't the individual colonies, the states at this time, they weren't supplying any army. Um, as we'll learn in future lessons, the uh, Continental Congress, they couldn't uh, set up their own army. Uh, they had to beg the states for, for men and supplies. Recruitment and morale was very low and desertion was very high. This guy, Benedict Arnold, he was, remember he was a hero of Quebec. He's the one who um, invaded Canada and took the fort at Quebec. He ended up defecting. He turned he turned uh, traitor and turned over to the British. Uh, and in doing so, he tried to give them um, West Point, which at the time was a fort. Uh, Today is a military school, but at this time it was a fort. And some of the Southern campaigns, Kings Mountain, 1400 over the mountain men. These are militia. They're fighting Tories. Remember the Tories. These were British militia. Uh, they weren't regular armies or re regular soldiers. They weren't part of the, the British regulars. They were uh, colonists who were loyal to the crown. British Rattan retreated to South Carolina. Br the British had to run all the way down to South Carolina. Battle of Calpins, uh, that last battle that's in uh, that movie Patriot, this is what it's kind of um, loosely based on. Right, the Continental Army, it formed on a small hill, the militia lined up in two lines, right? Cavalry head and was held in the rear. We're up here. Cal cavalry was hel held in the rear, right? The British, they attacked, hit this. The uh, militia retreated all the way past another hill. As the British came up, they were faced with the, the, uh, the Continentals, the regular army. And then the cavalry came and flanked them in a double pincer move here and hit them in the rear. Pretty good battle. Like I said, this was the, uh, the final battle in the Patriot, um, sort of kind of accurate, not really about time or place or anything else though. And then the Battle of Yorktown, that was the final, that was the end of it, right? Uh, the two British commanders were odds, Cornwallis and Clinton. They were two big British commanders. Cornwallis, he refused Clinton. He didn't want to return uh, to the coast. He took up quarters at Yorktown. This Chesapeake Bay here, this area here, this is where um, Washington, D.C. is today, right? Yorktown's on the outskirts of Washington, D.C. <laughs> Here we go, Lafayette, he came down this way, pinned Cornwallis at uh, Yorktown, Washington and Rochambeau marched down here, 
and the French to Grassy, they sailed in. The French came in here and blocked the port. They blocked Graves from getting down here and escaping. This turned into a siege at Yorktown. Um, Washington actually fought trench warfare at this time. He'd dig a trench, then with Yorktown up here, he'd dig a trench, and then a diagonal trench, and then another trench, and then a diagonal trench, and then another trench, so that his troops could get closer and closer to Yorktown without coming under a direct fire. Um, and then at this time, Cornwallis surrendered. Washington's forces outnumbered uh, them pretty well. You see he had about 15,000 troops under his command. Late siege to Yorktown, French Navy blocked, as I said, and in 1781, Cornwallis surrendered. And that was that picture at the beginning uh, showed. Sum it all up, French assistance was critical. critical. It was absolutely critical to the war effort. Uh, without it, there would the Americans would not have won the, won the war. Uh, militias required training, absolutely true. You couldn't just run out there and fight a regular army, just armed with the stuff that you had on your back and your hunting rifle. Didn't work very well. They did see a need for a continental army and that was continental wide army, something that would be able to cross state lines. Militias weren't allowed to cross state lines, uh, kind of like the, uh, the National Guard today. National Guard isn't allowed to cross state lines. Um, on the political, they found that central government was needed. Yes, absolutely. Um, because the, the Confederate gov government of everybody having to agree, all the states having to agree 100%, it, it wasn't uh, working well. And then the concept of the people's army, meaning an army made up of the people, of regular volunteers, rather than a professional class of soldier, um, that came out of this as well. And that's it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below.